Let's talk about JVC projectors. JVC has just recently announced the NZ7, NZ8, and NZ9 laser projectors. In US dollars, they are priced at 10K, 15K, and 25K, which translates approximately to, in Canadian dollars, 14K, 20K, and 32K. These are not cheap projectors, but for good reasons. The main thing is the laser diodes. Uh, these JVCs use uh, 20 diodes, like a uh, blue essence diode, they call it. The laser diodes takes about 20 hours to reach their um, half-life. So, in theory, you will be able to get at least 10,000 hours with virtually no degradation in uh, color shifting or dimming of the, the brightness of, of the diode itself, at least not to the naked eye. While these alone are fine and dandy, there are a lot more important things that's available and only available uh, on JVC projectors that make these worth the money. Let's start with the NZ7. Before I go further, please bear in mind that NZ7, NZ8, and NZ9 they all have uh, the full 48 gigabits per second HDMI 2.1, HDCP 2.3, HDMI inputs. Also, on all of them, JVC obviously keep featuring JVC's exclusive frame by frame or frame adapt, they call it, frame adapt HDR optimization. This frame-by-frame -frame analysis HDR tone mapping is currently the best HDR tone mapping algorithm available on any projector. You can compare it to Epson, you can compare it to Sony, you can compare it to anything at all. The JVC's frame adapt HDR optimizing is the absolute best. It's the absolute most effective, bar none. And then there is eShift 8K or what I also claim it to be fake 8K. So what it's doing, it's just like I mentioned before in the, my other video, GVC is taking its 4K chip and move it, like wobble it. So you get an equivalent to 16 megapixels of uh, projected image. So it's not really 8K in terms of number of pixel, uh, you get half of it, right? So you get 16 megapixels as opposed to 32 megapixels. How does it look? Based on my experience on JVC NX9, that's the one that's discontinued, the 8K eShift is visible. Like it's, the improvement is visible on my screen. I'm watching it from, uh, one my 96 inch 21 by 9 screen from about eight to nine feet away and i can see that the picture looks more solid the color looks more solid when i'm using the 8k e-shift it has all glass lens and capable to do up to 93 percent of the entire dci color space this is not something that you'll miss too much because most movies they are around 93 to 95 percent of DCI color space anyway it's very seldom that movies use the entire DCI p3 color space and having 2200 lumens for the projector is pretty good for about 120 inches 16 by 9 HDR reproduction speaking of HDR this projector the actually all seven eight and nine can do hdr 10 uh, hlg 
as usual. But also on top of that, it can also do HDR10+. No Dolby Vision yet, perhaps that will come in 2-3 years from now. But uh, HDR10+, hey, it's something. On the NZ8, which I find to be the best balance for this particular lineup, you get double the contrast ratio, so from 40,000 to 1 on the NZ7. Now it is 80,000 to 1 native contrast ratio with, obviously, because it's laser, you can get infinity to 1 contrast ratio using the dynamic laser algorithm. And you also get the full 100% DCI-P3 color space. But most importantly, a new wobulation mechanism created by JVC. So instead of moving just the 4K chip diagonally and doubling the number of pixel from 8 megapixel to 16 megapixel, using the X movement, JVC can attain the full 8K number of pixel. So 8K number of pixel is 32 megapixel. So it's 8 megapixel plus 8 megapixel plus 8 megapixel plus 8 megapixel. So you will get the full number of pixel count on your screen. Now, this is still fake 8K. Once 8K native is available, yes, the native 8K chip will be better than the E-Shift X 8K. But for the time being, this is the best thing you can get in terms of getting anything remotely to true 8K resolution. And don't forget about the 2500 lumens emanating from this projector. That's pretty bright. Even for a 140 inch 16 by 9 screen. If that's not enough for you, of course, there is an NZ9. With this projector, you get a 3000 lumens. That's mighty bright for about 160, 170 inch 16 by 9 screen to 100 millimeter high contrast lens that is even more pure than the high contrast lenses used in NZ7 and NZ8. Simple rule of thumb, the larger the lens, the less edge softening of the image that you will encounter. But at the same time, it's $32,000 Canadian or 25K US. Once I experienced the NZ8 myself, and of course, together with the NZ7 and NZ9, I'll make another video. But on the spec alone, I highly recommend the NZ8. And for now, thank you for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And please, please, please write down your comment below. And I'll try to answer any question that may arise. Thank you. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Also, follow my Twitter at David Susilo and read my reviews at davidsusiloancensored.wordpress.com. Bye for now.